Computers have been getting smaller and faster for decades thanks to the hard work of engineers making smaller and better transistors, devices which let a small electric current control the flow of a larger current. Since their discovery in 1947, transistors have been the key to the success of computers, and cramming more of them onto a chip has been the primary focus of massive engineering teams. We've gotten so good at making smaller transistors that we're actually beginning to reach the limits of physics, and of the silicon that they're usually made out of. To keep making better and better computers, computer manufacturers are looking beyond the transistor toward more specialized components for the hardware of the future. For computer memory specifically, that future might lie in a strange little device called the memristor, if they even actually exist, that is. Let's explore. In 1971, a scientist named Leon Chua claimed that the field of electronics was missing something fundamental. He was looking at four important values in an electronic circuit, the charge, the current, the voltage, and the flux linkage. Charge is carried by electrons moving through a circuit, current is the rate at which that charge moves, and voltage is how much energy a circuit has per a given amount of charge. The flux linkage is a little more complicated. It's the time integral of voltage, which, if you haven't taken calculus, means that the flux linkage increases both when the voltage is higher and when that voltage persists over a longer period of time. It's called the flux linkage because Michael Faraday proved that it's related to the magnetic flux, a measure of the strength of the magnetic field passing through the circuit. Chua noticed that these four basic properties of a circuit can be paired in six ways, meaning that there should be six relationships between them. Two of these pairs are mathematically related by time. Current is the change in charge over time, and voltage is the change in flux linkage over time. Three of the pairs are related by the operation of basic circuit components. Voltage and current are connected by resistors, as described in Ohm's law V equals IR. Current and flux linkage, or really the related magnetic flux, are connected by inductors, and voltage and charge are related by capacitors. Now resistors, capacitors, and inductors are all basic electronic components known since at least the 1800s. What Chua noticed was that, at the time in 1971, there hadn't been a component discovered that related flux linkage and charge. Working out the math, Chua figured out that this missing fourth electrical device would have to, in some way, remember the amount of voltage that passed through it over time, and change its resistance based on that. He therefore named this mysterious missing component the memristor, and proposed this squiggle shape as its symbol. Twa also designed a device that worked like a memristor, but relied on a constant supply of power to keep working. So for a few decades, electrical engineers searched for the passive memristor, one which would remember its resistance even after having its power turned off. R. Stanley Williams at Hewlett Packard Labs claimed to have built the first memristor in 2007. The key to HP's memristor is a material called titanium dioxide, which is often used as a white pigment. On a molecular level, titanium dioxide forms as a crystal with interlaced titanium and oxygen ions. It's usually an electrical insulator, but if some of those oxygen ions are missing, it starts to conduct electricity. Basically, the gaps where oxygen ions should be, or vacancies, can get filled by neighboring oxygen ions, making a new vacancy a little to one side that can get filled again, and so on. Since the oxygen ions are charged, this means that electric charges can move through the crystal, which is what it means to conduct electricity. The negatively charged oxygen ions are doing all the moving, but you can think of it like the vacancy itself is a positive charge that's moving through the crystal. In HP's memristor, a thin film of titanium dioxide sits between two tiny wires. The film is only about 50 nanometers across, that's 50 billionths of a meter. The titanium dioxide starts in two layers, a depleted layer which is missing several oxygen ions, so it has lots of vacancies, and a non-depleted layer with all its oxygen ions and no vacancies. Remember, the vacancies are what let the titanium dioxide conduct electricity. So in this state, it's hard for the electricity to move through the film because of the non-depleted layer. When we apply an electric current, a positive charge gets added to the depleted layer, and a negative charge gets added to the non-depleted layer. The negatively charged oxygen ions get attracted by the positive charge and repelled by the negative charge, and begin to move from the non-depleted layer toward the depleted layer. This means that the vacancies begin to spread into the non-depleted layer. As the vacancies move in, the insulating non-depleted layer gets thinner, meaning the film as a whole becomes more and more conductive. So the more current we apply to the system, the more conductive the system gets, at least until the vacancies are spread through the entire film. Importantly, if we switch the current off, the vacancies stay where they are, so the system remembers what level of resistance it has. If we apply a current in the opposite direction, the vacancies move back and the resistance increases again. When this result was published, everyone agreed that it was a great device with the potential to make computer memory faster, smaller, and more efficient. But was it really a memristor? Leon Chua himself, then in his 70s, certainly seemed to think so. A few other scientists, however, have written papers casting doubt on this. Basically, they claim that these so-called memristors weren't really conforming to the mathematical properties that Chua originally predicted. Sure, they remembered to some extent, but that didn't properly relate this charge and flux linkage the way that true memristors should. The critics said that HP was overhyping a minor discovery, while HP said these critics were just being pedantic. 
Of course, none of this would matter if HP could bring the tech to market, but while it's been over a decade and this technology, called resistive random access memory, or RERAM, isn't being used commercially yet. RERAM just isn't cheaper than the sort of transistor-based memory that we've already been using. But maybe one day memristors, or at least sort of memristors, will power the devices you use to watch videos just like this one. And as always, thanks for watching.